things theology, all things theology. We chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hallowed be, cause this is how we do it at all things theology. We're gonna transition here. <laughs> we are going to transition. Uh, you, you, you know, I just, I just gotta play it. Jingle bells, jingle bells, I'm not going to hell. You know what I'm saying? Marcus Rogers really gets into his view of the Godhead. And I found some of this very interesting because it really gets to what I've been saying for a long time. One, Marcus Rogers is confused. Um, though he may though he won't admit that, he has he's presented a confused God. I'll say that. A confusing God. Um, but Marcus Rogers espouses modalism throughout this video. Uh, very interesting because, again, it's what I've said, which made David Lynn partnering with him very interesting. But what we're going to do, we're going to get into some of these segments and we're going to talk about it. I, I entitled this section the Marcus is ignorant section. Why does the Bible refer to the Holy Spirit <clears throat> as the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost and not the Holy Person or the Holy One? <laughs> that's that's a, one. It's silly. It doesn't refer to the father as the person, as a person. So, again, we're going to get to that in a second. But Marcus Rogers denies that the spirit is a person. Now, and, that, and one of his denials is because of an assumption of, of anti-intellectualism. Because he thinks what, what Trinitarians are saying when we say person. No, I mean, we can explain this all day to Marcus Rogers. We're not saying this, the spirit of God is a literal human person. But the person, but when we refer to a person, we're using um, um, historic early church language to speak of a personality, right? The, the 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 spirit is not just some kind of force, as Jehovah's Witness refer to the spirit as. But the spirit can be grieved. The spirit can uh, know things, right? The spirit himself is a conscious uh, person. Right? He has personality. That's what we're referring to. Again, Marcus Rogers knows that's what was being said, but he, he dismisses it and then uses his arguments. Well, God is spirit, the Bible says, and his spirit is holy because he is holy. So it's holy spirit. God is spirit and his spirit is holy. So we are filled with the holy spirit. Now, Jesus is the holy one. Mark 1 24 saying, let us alone. These demons are talking. What have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth art thou come to destroy us. I know thee who thou art the Holy one of God, Jesus, right? Now this is where it's going to get real crazy. And I yes, want you to indeed. study this for yourself. Jesus is the word made flesh. John 1, 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the one of the begotten, one of the Father, full of grace and truth. In the beginning, the word was with God, and the word was God. So we know that Jesus, right, the lamb was slain before the foundation of the earth. He has always been there. He is fully God. He Now, one of the things that Mark is going to contradict himself is he's saying that the Jesus has always been there. Watch. We're going to watch uh, in a little little bit later. Marcus is actually going to deny that. And let's see. One of, one of the confusing things about Marcus Rogers is he'll say something and deny it, um, you know, later in the video, later in a later video. And so he's saying, well, notice Jesus is uncreated. What? Right. Well, OK, watch the next clip. We'll finish this clip out. But but we'll continue is fully man. John 1, 18 says, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he hath declared him. Now, I just want to talk about this for a second, because a lot of people, uh, I was trying to really push for unity in the body of Christ. And I was trying to show people how this is not a heaven or hell issue. Uh, when people want to discuss these words and these things are not in the Bible. What does it mean when it says that Jesus was in the bosom of the Father? Yeah, let me explain this because I want you to notice something. This this kind of demonstrates how we can use same language but mean totally different things. 
the bosom being in the bosom of the the father is is to uh, communicate this relationship this nearness this intimacy that the son and the father have with one another what it's not referring to is that jesus was literally in the chest of the father entrapped and that way you can say he's always been there that's absolutely not what is being meant um it's, it's 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 irrational that someone would even try to communicate, but that's what he's communicated in the past. And I believe he communicates that in this video as well. What does it mean if we know that the word was made flesh? What does it mean when we when Marcus hears the word word made flesh? He literally thinks words like Jesus was spoke. And then that means words became literal flesh. Words don't become flesh. Let's, let's just get that out the window. That's irrational. Um, w whatever you believe the word is, it's not what Marcus Rogers says. Let's, let's just go with that one. Oh, that in Hebrews, it says a body you have prepared for him. Notice how he's he's everywhere. He, it's one of the first things they'll do content on Marcus Rogers, uh, disagreeing with him, making videos. It's he, 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 This man will be in everywhere no there's no context it's just all just hopscotching over here and over there and then yeah and, and trying to jam all these things together as if they're talking about the same thing hebrews 10 verse 5 wherefore when he cometh into the world he says sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not but a body hast thou prepared him yes so the word was made flesh jesus was in the bosom of the father and a body was prepared so the word was wrapped in flesh. Now, the reason I brought this up oh, is because so no many people are divided about something that is not a heaven or hell issue and something that I've seen many people don't fully understand and they fully can't comprehend. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not us who don't understand or comprehend this. Again, go and watch that video. God, the, the, uh, the Godhead explained like you never heard it before something like that marcus rogers did this video about two years now and it is one of the most confusing and, and not because you know some kind of intellectual inability on my own but it was by confusing i mean literally irrational view of god was postulated by marcus rogers and his friend william the thrill jackson yes we all agree that jesus is god no, we, we all don't. agree that the holy spirit is god no we don't we believe that the father is god that they are one, right? No arguing. But my question is. <clears throat> and Marcus is actually going to present what he means by God being one a little later. You want to stick around for that. So stay, stay tuned for that. What form was Jesus when he was in the bosom of the father? Before he was made flesh, what form was he in? Now, the word was made flesh. Well, what is a word? Watch you this. You see what I'm saying? And so a lot of... See, he literally thinks literal words. So, but the problem with that view is words don't um, have, a, have, a, have, a, have a conscious. They don't think. Words don't, aren't said to create. Uh, words don't move. They don't re respond. They don't... You know what I'm saying? The words don't do these things. It's... It's, but that's what he think the word was. That's not what's being communicated in John one. Well, they're debating when we get to heaven, are we going to see three people, two people or just one on the throne? That is not the debate. Again, um, those are issues where I'm more willing to, 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 uh, to debate, but that's not the debate at hand. But again, it, it's going to, as we play some of these clips, we're going to see more of these things come out, but, Again, remember I said Marcus believes doesn't really hold to an eternal view of Jesus. He he will give lip service to these things, but he's going to admit here that Jesus was brought forth. Watch. Think about this in Genesis 1-3, and this is just my personal study. And like I said, this is not a, a heaven or hell issue. I just found it interesting. And God's so Marcus gets to determine all these. Hey, it's not it's not heaven or hell. I I, I say it is my own personal study. <laughs> but watch this. Said, let there be light, and there was light. What light was God talking about? Because if you continue to read, right, 
what does it say? It got, God tells you what the light he was talking about. It literally tells you. Uh, in verse 4, it says, God said the light was good. God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. So this light, obviously, is not the sun. It's not the moon and the stars. Yes, that does come later. But there's this light of dayness that's being created. So it tells you what the light actually is in the passage. But watch what Marcus Rogers says the light is. The light was created on the fourth day. He separated the, the, the sun and the moon and the day from the night. What, so what light are we talking about here in Genesis 1-3? It's not, it, it tells you, literally verse 4 or 5. The sun is not the stars. That's it's correct. not the moon. That's correct. He says, let there be light, and there was light. John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the mediator, the only mediator between us and the Father. Jesus is the what? The light oh of boy. the world. Oh, boy. Now, do you see what's being suggested here? That the light here is Jesus, which would literally... Jesus would be created because this is the, the light at one point was no, there was no light, but it is brought forth and this is creation events happening. So he's so Marcus Rogers will say, yes, God's created. But here he's suggesting Jesus is the light in Genesis 1 3 that was brought forth. You see what I'm saying? I hear you now. I am not telling people People took a clip and they ran with it. I'm not saying, oh, Jesus is a thought. I mean, that's, that's not a clip we ran with it. You said it. <laughs> but 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 watch. The Bible says that Jesus was in the bosom of the Father and the word was made flesh. So some people will say, let there be light. So So notice, he is arguing. That when it says, let there be light, that was the bringing forth of the son out of the, the bosom of the father. And let me just show you how ridiculous this is. That this is not, it's not even speaking about a, a person, not speaking about people. The Bible says we're children of the light. So does that mean in verse three, we also were created absurdities. But the Bible calls us light. Again. You have to allow the passage, the context of determining the meaning of words. Jesus was always there, but he was in the bosom of the father. Let there be light. Notice, notice. <laughs> Again, listen to what's being said. Jesus is in the bosom of the father. So, so somehow he's in the, literally in the father. And when God said, let there be light, he, he, he came out of the father, so to speak. And I guess there was Jesus. And Jesus was good. I guess God separated Jesus from the darkness. God called Jesus day. Again, it makes no sense in the light of the passage. <laughs> Pardon the pun, right? Um, but this is not what's going on. Jesus is distinct from the Father. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. There was this face-to-face, this, -face, this prosopon relationship with the Father and the Son. The communicating always with one another, not Jesus in the father, like literally in the father. And then when God said, let there be light, Jesus comes forth. That is absurd that someone even postulates something like that. I mean, part of me is like, so part of me is like this, you know, I mean, I'm just kind of lost for words. Wait a minute. Who are you? Like, who are you to even think of something like that? I mean, you know, I'm. And so my point is, nobody that I've ever talked to or had this conversation can give like a clear, you know, uh, you know, line by line, word by word. This is a matter of fact. This is what we're going to see. And nobody but me. <laughs> heaven. OK, so. God pours out his spirit. I just want you to notice something. That's Marcus Rogers' explanation of Genesis 1-3. <laughs> I mean, it's laughable, but sad at the same time, right? I mean, 
You see what I'm saying? I hear you. He's not pouring out a person. He's pouring out his spirit. Now, that's absurd. That That is a, a completely absurd. Because, again, when he says person, when Marcus Rogers says person, he's assuming a, a hu- human person. So, again, this is why he doesn't believe the, the Holy Spirit is a person. You want to call the Holy Spirit a person? Hey, it's not a heaven or hell issue. Nothing Does the is. Holy Spirit have a personality? Yes. Which is exactly what we mean. So you should not deny that the Holy Spirit is a person since you're actually saying what we're saying. Now, I don't think we're saying the same thing because he doesn't believe the the he believes the uh, the Holy Spirit is actually just God, the father spirit, not uh, distinct from the father. The personality of God, the characteristics of God. And we'll dive into that verse. But me personally. I don't want your person. And this is where another argument happens. What is the definition of person? Well, a person, our definition in America is a human (laughs) being. You see? Well, we know that Jesus was the only one that was wrapped in flesh. So now, so we go to a uh, Webster's modern definition of the term to make, you know, we don't actually... Hey, how are you guys using the word? And we don't go to, you know, things like that. Hey, I'm just going to go to person, which... You know, in our understanding, yeah, sure, that's we're not using it in a in a Webster we're using this in a theological term. But by his own definition, the the father is not a person either. Because he's assuming humanness to uh that term person. Jesus is the only one that became human. So I just want you to understand the revelation that you have the literal spirit of God. He's poured a portion of himself into you remember and i would disagree with that we don't have a portion of the spirit we have the spirit we don't have the i mean i don't know where he's getting all that like what what percentage of the spirit do we have we have the fullness of the spirit Anyways, I mean, it gets worse, guys. Let's 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 just go to the next clip. You want to call the Holy Spirit a person uh, or whatever? I just want to get people to really think about this and really understand that it's the Spirit of God Notice. inside of you, the literal Spirit of God. It's not like oh, I sent somebody else. Notice, it's the Father isn't sending someone else. So again, the spirit is not a distinct person from the from the father. It's God's own spirit, which he sends a portion of himself to the believer. You guys seeing that? No, God is in you when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. A portion of God. You are filled with the spirit of God. Again, I got just want you guys to hear this. Uh, One, anti-Trinitarian two anti-biblical view of god uh but and then he takes delight in this he starts even mocking here let me look at some of these comments real quick i know some of them are absolutely crazy because i get a lot of people they get so mad with what i teach because it goes against their theology and their dodge and and so many people they want to be right and that's why we have division instead of looking at the fruit you know they they want to be able to slap a name on it well it's not authentic If it's not a Trinitarian Jesus, it's not authentic. If it's not a Pentecostal Jesus, it's it's not authentic. If it's a Baptist, if it's not a Baptist Jesus or a oneness Jesus. Marcus, is it authentic if it's a Mormon Jesus? Is what what about the the Hindu Jesus? Because, yeah, I know you want to want to use a little mockery here, but those groups speak in tongues, you know? Uh, Yeah, the, the the those groups speak in tongues. Are you going to deny the authenticity of that then? Hey, I just want to be, I just want a little consistency here from Marcus Rogers. You know, that's all, you know. All of these names that are nowhere to be found in the Bible. Let me tell you something. When you have an encounter with Jesus, you know, because something changes in your life. There's a transformation that takes place. Again, a, a, a Mormon would amen that. Even a Muslim, a uh, Jehovah's Witness would agree with that. So when, here's one thing Marcus doesn't like when when it when it's doctrinal spe- uh, 
specity to condemn his views, he doesn't like it. But when he wants to disagree with others, right, gummy bear Christianity, then he wants to use the Bible and be specific. This is very interesting. And that's all that matters. And I know that's not popular. Oh, it is. The world doesn't really care about theological spec- uh, uh, being specific about uh, doctrine. Right. We, they just want the Jesus just that, that get along. He's the inclusive Jesus. Yeah, the world would agree with everything he's saying. But people will look at somebody and say, hey, are you talking about the Pentecostal Jesus or the Baptist Jesus or a Lutheran? What, what Jesus are you talking about? But but Ephesians says you have unity in the spirit. When you're filled with the spirit, you'll know by the spirit who's who. My sheep know my voice. That's actually not what even <laughs> the, the again, the, my sheep hear my voice has nothing to note with. Oh, well, you just know someone if there's a Christian, if you, that actually has to do with actually the sheep will always follow Jesus. Not just, oh, somebody says, hey, hey, is there a Christian? Oh, you, you'll, you'll just be able to know the first time you ever meet them and stuff like that. Again, this is a very Gnostic view of uh, knowledge. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit can speak. But see, the problem is a lot of people are not filled with the spirit. They're filled with religion, theology, and doctrine. And that's why we have confusion. Amen. Yeah, I am filled with religion, which is not a bad thing. James, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, James 127, I believe. Yes, not a bad thing to be religion, uh, or even religious for that matter. Um, doctrine and theology are important. That's I mean, the Bible is a theological work. It is a doctrinal work. Anyone telling you these are negative things doesn't know their Bible that will and is actually offering a false doctrine and a unbiblical theology. You can't get away from this. Everybody preaches a theology, a uh, doctrine. The question is, is it biblical? Because they're not able to gauge and judge by the spirit. They have to rely on their head knowledge. So from their head knowledge, they need you to be a certain denomination for them to discern, okay, you're legit. But when you walk by the spirit, you don't need that because you can discern by the spirit. He's literally saying we should get rid of theology and doctrine. Guys, it is literally getting worse and worse by the clip. I don't know what the Bereans were doing, searching all the Bible for, for doctrinal specificity. I don't know what they were doing to making sure Paul wasn't preaching false doctrine and rather a biblical theology, but they should have just known by the Spirit, right? But Paul commended them. You see the very difference between the apostolic doctrine versus Marcus Rogers' doctrine, right? Uh, again, more of the forgetting theology. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because there's a lot of things that we argue about that are not heaven or hell issues. There's a lot of words that we're trying to use to define if somebody's real, if they're saved or not. Guess what? The only thing you have to do to be saved is to be born again. Now, I find that very weird after he said, told us, right, some people's view of uh, um, speaking in tongues is antichrist, but which contradicts everything he just said there. Because if all you got to do is be born again, then I don't need to speak in tongues, right? But Marcus Rogers doesn't believe that. So therefore you do. Again, it's a whole mishmash of mess there. This is, you don't have to claim Pentecostal. You don't have to claim Trinity. You don't. Guess what? These are words that some man made and we just started running with it. Instead of testing the spirit by the spirit, we're testing people's salvation by words that are not in the Bible. And I know that that makes religious demons so mad. They get <laughs> furious when I say, they say, stop saying that. You need to affirm uh, Pentecostalism and, and Luther, whatever denominational stuff. No, I don't. All I have to do is be born again. I don't have to bow to your religious nonsense because it's man-made. It's nowhere to be found in the Bible. So again, Marcus throws the all theology. Hey, as long as, as long as you're just born again, right? Everything else. It's just on the table, right? We, we can have, hey, a, a view of God that um, just uh, contradicts everything, right? But as long as we just say we're born again, this this title of the section, I titled this part right here. We're going to play this next clip. It said, Firehouse is a, what did I say? Firehouse is a fire mess. That's what I titled this clip here. That's why we have so much division, guys. So, like I said, 
you can just pray about it. You know, this is something God has dealt with me about over the years. I don't, I don't, I got people at my church who they're like, yep, I'm Trinitarian. I got people at my church who they're oneness. Hey, as long as you feel with the spirit of God and you born again, that's it. I'm rocking. So even in Marcus Rogers church, there's, there's Trinitarians, there's oneness again. So what do you tell them about the biblical view of God? Or do you just not touch it and just say, hey, we're just in unity for unity's sake. We're not going to touch the doctrine, even though the Bible says that, which, which tells me you're not touch, teaching on the full counsel of God at Firehouse. You guys are just throwing away uh, theological distinctives, uh, really theological uh, yeah, distinctives about the nature of God. And just saying, as long as you guys can just say Godhead together, I guess that that serves as some kind of applaud on the back, right? And just, hey, I mean, yeah, I mean, I know I believe there's three persons in the Godhead. And you believe there's uh, one person who manifests themselves in three different uh, manifestations. Yeah, totally different, right? But, I mean, as long as we can speak in tongues and, and cast out devils, that's really what's important, right? Very interesting, right? Now, this is the section where I've titled His Modalism Comes Out. So... A lot of people, why they struggle with what I'm saying is because they say, well, then you're trying to say that the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. But the Bible says the fullness of the Godhead is in Jesus. So the authority is in that name. This is why we cast out devils in that name. Now, I'm made in the image of God. I want you to watch this. Watch this, because he's going to make some correlation. And then this is a classic modalist example. Right. You are made in the image of God. I've got a flesh. I've got a soul. And uh, you have a spirit. Right. The Bible talks about Jesus gave up the ghosts and things like that. Now, your flesh is 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 not going to heaven. Your soul. Right. And your oh. There was, there was like two heresies there. One, let's deal with the first one, the modalism view, right? The modalism view, right? Uh, some kind of correlation between the image of God being reflected into us. Therefore, God looks like us. So so though you are one person, you have a flesh, spirit, and soul. Even that trichotomy view, which I'm, I'm a bichotomist, but nevertheless, Marcus Rogers presents that. And two, he's saying our body is not going to heaven, <laughs> uh, but our soul is. Y yes, they are. Yes, it, yes, it is. Yes, we will get uh, resurrected bodies, but we will have a body in heaven. Um, but again, he is preaching modalism. And, and just in case you don't believe let's let's continue playing it out. We have further evidence of that. Filled with the spirit or you filled with a demonic spirit, right? But it's three in one. Now, what he means is three in one person. That is not, again, not Trinitarian. Again, I want people because I've, I've had people over, over the last year say Marcus Rogers does believe in the Trinity. He does. He, he, he he's or he's not against it. He, you know, that is a modalist example. Again, the analogy he gave with himself, it is a modalistic understanding. Now, I agree. He contradicts him so much. He contradicts himself so, so, so much. But again, I'm just displaying the evidence. These now they have different functions. They're. There's a separation there because my flesh, right, is not my soul, if that makes sense. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. But it is in your body. So if we take the analogy, even in your flesh, if this is a correlation to God, then the father, though he's not the spear and the son, they are in him. Literally, they, they don't separate out. Right. They are in their in his body. Again. That's what the analogy would entail. What I'm saying. So there is a distinction because Jesus, the son, was the lamb. The Holy Spirit was the comforter. But there's still one. See, it starts getting deep. And this is where people's <laughs> brain, they, be, they get blown because everybody. Yeah, I mean, you're not lying. This is blown away with me with the modalistic heresy. He's trying to describe it and people try to describe it a little bit different. And oh, if you don't describe it like me, then that's false. The reality is Father, Son, Holy Ghost, all God, all one. Notice all one person. But let's get into this last clip because he actually goes further into this modalistic example. So let's check this out. You could say that I got my flesh. I got my soul. I got my spirit. But my name is Marcus. OK, because these three 
and one. The f- no, three in one. Notice one what? Person. Marquez is one person. He's not three persons, right? He is one person, but he goes further in this analogy. Fullness of the Godhead is in Jesus. All right? I'm a son. I'm a father. I'm a soldier. But if I go to the bank to cash a check, I don't sign it soldier. I don't sign it son. I don't sign it father. To cash that check, I got to put a name to it. Right? So it's the same thing. So it's the same thing. So this is a classic modalist understanding. Son, father, uh, husband analogy. Usually you see all these are the same person. Right? They just have different functions or or even manifestations, right? He says, if I was to go into the bank, I would um, sign my name, i.e. Marcus Rogers. But the son, father, husband, they're still of the same person. Again, this is where he presents a confusing. um, Again, it has contradicted stuff he said in the past. I'm, I'm not denying that at all. But again, in modalism, those this is why they can say the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus, because the father is just manifesting himself as a, a different person or a different uh, function. It's just a different manifestation. Still the father. And so in modalism, classic modalism, the name of the father is Jesus. <laughs> Guys, you don't believe me. I've had discussions with modalists before in this channel. You can watch different modalists. This is a, this is a straw man or anything like this. And Marcus is digging in the bag of his old oneness Pentecostalism to demonstrate that Jesus is not the father. The father is not the son. The father is not the spirit. We can see this encapsulated in the view of, uh, at, at the baptism of Jesus. The father speaks from heaven, right? Um, the, the son is getting baptized in the water. The spirit descending like a dove. This this would be a weird event if this was the same person. But clearly it's not. You see the three distinct uh, many times in the, uh, the especially the gospel of John. My goodness. Follow the pronouns. Right. Jesus distinguishes himself from the father. Right. He's praying to the father. He's he was sent by the father. Right. The father loves him. Right. So so many I mean, the pronouns dis, uh, distinguish this is not the same person with some kind of just, oh, it's just the different roles in the, in the same person. No, that is not what's in view. Again, my estimation, the Trinity makes best sense of these things. Again, yes, I just wanted to respond to these things because someone sent me this and I said, man, I would like to respond because it is always a teachable moment. Guys, you won't believe this. When I was at the G3 conference crazy some uh, yes, a uh listener of the channel said that um she she has been listening for a year or two she used to follow as marcus rogers and she said it was my um critique of the trinity and things like this which helped her better understand which all glory to god to that you know um which helped her understand these things and so Guys, this is why it's important. So many people, okay, just leave Marcus Rogers alone. Guys, there are people listening and they come across videos like this and it helps them come out of, yes, what I'm calling a cult, a uh, a theological cult, like as such. And so hopefully, guys, this video was informative, helpful. Till the next time, grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly videos, lives, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us.